Hello, and welcome to the inaugural episode of my Big Data MBA video training classes. Yes, this is episode number one. And what I want to do is I want to create a series of episodes based on my infographics. What I'm going to do is each of my sessions will take a single infographic and I'm going to drill into detail into each of the aspects of the infographic and talk about the story that infographic is trying to tell. Each infographic, by the way, is associated with a blog. And so I'll also make that blog available. So you can actually go along with the infographic and the blog side by side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create this video. The reason why I'm doing this is twofold. First off, I'm on a mission to make sure everybody feels like they can become a citizen of data science. You, you don't need to be a big giant brain person to be a data scientist, scientist, but everybody can embrace becoming a citizen of data science, understanding where and how to leverage data and analytics in their day-to-day -day work lives and other sorts of aspects of their life. The second aspect though is how do, I, how do we help organizations, in particular, how do I help organizations become more effective at leveraging data and analytics to power their business models. So that's the things we're gonna cover. I hope you find this enjoyable. And um, here is episode number one. And episode number one is gonna start with what's called the big data storyboard, or this big data story map. And the big data story map is what I wrote and created back in January of 2013. Now that's over seven years ago. And as I go back in time, and I was at a, at a previous point in my life when I did this, that I was doing several presentations and speeches around big data and it all sort of matured around what was, you'll find in this big data story map. And what I find very interesting and very comforting about this big data story map is that many of the ideas that I've talked about seven plus years ago are actually still relevant today. Let me kind of walk you through the big data story map and let's start in that upper left-hand corner there, right? Let's start over here and talk about the challenges that traditional organizations faced, that being traditional organizations focused on leveraging data and analytics using the BI and data warehousing. So what problem is in those environments is that BI and data warehouses are very batch oriented flexible. They were very labor intensive to build and performance when, and scalability was very challenging and, and you dealt with aggregated data. And it was really hard for organizations to go from that traditional town and become more predictive, become more prescriptive, become more, more real time. And the business challenges here highlighted in this, in this slide here, um, you can see, you know, we had very rigid architecture, which, which really impeded organizations from taking advantage rapidly of business opportunities. Retrospective reporting doesn't really help predict what's going to happen and doesn't provide that kind of guidance organizations needed to make better decisions. Social, mobile, and machine-generated data like IoT data just were not available. They wouldn't, you couldn't put them in a data warehouse. It just, they're just too massive. And by the way, the fact that in a data warehouse, you tended to aggregate data basically wiped out all the valuable customer product and operational nuances based on the data. So you can see what happened. In order to move from traditional town to value creation town, we see and introduce the Big Data Business Model Maturity Index. Yes, this is the first time I started talking about it. And you can see the five stages there, business monitoring, business insights, business optimization, which are still the same today. Data monetization, today I now call it insights monetization because it's not about the data that we monetize, it's actually about the insights. And business metamorphosis has been transformed by the word digital transformation has sort of consumed that. And for organizations to make this transition from traditional town to value city, they had to cross a path, but there was a, there were some aids for them. There was this, what I used to have was rivers of data, volume, variety, and velocity. Yes, the three V's of big data. I had envisioned them in 2013 as a river that was both, it was deep, diverse, and very fast. Well, of course, we know today that that's no longer envisioned as a river, it's a data lake. But you can see on the right-hand side here, how what are the risks for organizations that were not prepared to take advantage of big data, right? You're gonna get outflanked by innovators who are leveraging the insights buried in the data faster than you are. You're gonna miss business opportunities because you're dealing with aggregated data in a batch sense and you're missing all the real-time opportunities in front of you. Over time, by the inability to leverage data and analytics to predict, to prescribe, you're going to see your profits and margins de degenerate. And finally, over time, you're going to lose out market share. All kinds of bad things because you're not focused on big data from a business perspective. You're not figured out how to leverage big data and take the, big dis the business model maturation index and move across. You see the path now here in the middle. You see some very familiar stuff. There's the value journey. We first started talking about the value journey over seven years ago. And while some of the stages have changed, it still starts with this idea, hey, what problem are you trying to start, start to solve? 
You know, begin with an end in mind. What's your identified business initiative? Why is it important to the business? And then go through and define what data you're gonna need, what analytics you're gonna need, and what architecture and infrastructure you're gonna need. And then finally, it all wraps itself up into operationalization. Yes, the how do we take the data and weave it, interweave it into our value creation processes so that we realize these benefits in the upper right-hand side here of you know, continuously driving business innovation, delivering real-time insights that optimize the optim operations and boost profits and provide unprecedented customer insights that we can use to improve product performance and the user experience. So in summary, you can see that what I laid out over seven years ago in the big data story map is still pretty relevant today. And what we've learned is that some of these things have morphed and over the next series of episodes, we're gonna dive deeper into a lot of these key points. We're gonna dive deeper into the value engineering process. We're gonna dive deeper into the, the operationalization of big data. We're gonna talk about how design thinking can bring in the stakeholders to help us identify those targeted business initiatives. And of course, finally, we're gonna talk about the economics of data and analytics and digital transformation. So hope you enjoyed this series. Please give me feedback and um, hopefully this comes through clear. Cheers.